Greetings. In this video, we are going to be continuing with our introduction to chromatography and specifically talking about separation with a separatory funnel. Now, if you remember, the key to um, quantitative analysis is to be able to separate, either physically or chemically, the analyte from the mixture. One of the simplest examples of this is the use of a separatory funnel in organic chemistry. If you're not familiar with a separatory funnel, the concept is that if you have done an organic reaction, you're liable to end up with some you know, mixture. And what you want to do is put the mixture into the separatory funnel and extract the compound that you're trying to isolate. The way this works is through an equilibrium solubility problem. If we consider a fairly simple case like, let's say, salted butter. If you have something like salty butter and you want to separate the salt from the organic material, the butter, you could consider their different solubilities in different solvents. For example, the butter being a organic hydrocarbon is largely nonpolar, so it would be more soluble in an organic solvent. The salt, an ionic compound, is probably going to be more soluble in a polar solvent like water. So, you could use the separatory funnel and introduce two immiscible phases, an organic phase and an aqueous phase. If you put these both into the separatory funnel, because of the differences in polarity, they will not mix. They are immiscible. That will set up two distinctly different layers of solvent in the same funnel. If I want to separate a mixture, what I could do would be to put that mixture into the separatory funnel and shake it up, allowing the salt and the butter to interact with both the organic and the aqueous phase. This will set up an equilibrium for both of those between those two phases. The ability to separate those two things are going to be determined by their distribution coefficients. The distribution coefficient is, in a sense, sort of like an equilibrium constant, except what we're really looking at now is the concentration of the co one compound in the upper phase, we'll say the organic layer, compared to its solubility in the aqueous layer, the lower phase. If we're talking about our example with salt and butter, well, the salt will be more soluble in the aqueous phase, so it would be a small number over a big number, because it's more soluble in the lower phase, which would give us a very small distribution coefficient. The butter, on the other hand, would be very soluble in an organic phase and not very soluble in an aqueous phase. So we would have two distinctly different distribution coefficients. If we put that into the separatory funnel then and shook it up, the butter would largely dissolve into the organic phase and the salt would largely dissolve into the aqueous phase. We could then open up the stopcock, drain the aqueous phase out and therefore physically separate the solution which contained the salt from the solution that contained the butter. Oftentimes, 
compounds don't have you know a unique solubility in one or the other so you have to try to do the best you can um, considering they may be soluble in, in both considering a case where we have a mixture of a and b a has a distribution ratio of four to one that means that it is more soluble in the organic phase under an equilibrium condition by a factor of four b the other compound we're trying to separate has a distribution of one which means it is equally soluble in the upper and lower phases these differences in the distribution coefficient allow us to do a separation if we put the mixture of a and b into the separatory funnel a one-to-one -one molar mixture and we allowed it to separate then after we did one equilibrium there would be 0.8 moles of a in the upper phase and 0.2 moles of a in the lower phase setting up a four to one ratio based on its distribution coefficient b of course having a one to one or a distribution coefficient of one would have 0.5 in the upper phase and 0.5 in the lower phase so if we did one equilibrium if we allowed it to separate just based on their solubilities we would go from a 50 50 mixture to an upper phase which is about 62 percent a and a lower phase which is 71 percent b we have in fact increased the purity a little bit we haven't completely isolated them from each other but we've only done one equilibrium if we then took that mixture and we took the upper layer from that and put it into a new separatory flask so we're going to extract the upper level with a new aqueous layer and we took the aqueous layer that we just separated off and put it into a different separatory funnel we could extract it with a new organic layer in this case the aqueous layer would set up a new equilibrium and the organic layer would set up a new equilibrium after our second extraction the upper layer of a would be 72 percent a and the lower layer in the second flask would be 86 percent b notice that we've gone from 50 50 after one extraction to 62 percent and 71 percent and after two extractions we have now gone to 72% and 86%. So every time you do an equilibrium, you get it a little more pure. But of course, this leads to a very complex solution in which you're trying to keep track of which flask is what, and it's all a clear solution, but you can start combining upper and lowers to combine everything but the more the number of equilibria you do the more purification that you get the more separation you get the upper layer will become increasingly pure in a the lower layer will become increasingly pure in b a will always be a little bit soluble B will be even more soluble. Eventually, you could, if you kept track of all your funnels, actually separate A and B. This is the basis of one of the original chromatography experiments referred to as Craig countercurrent chromatography. Craig, counter Craig countercurrent chromatography is really the concept of 
an automated separatory funnel experiment in which you set up a large number of separatory funnels or equivalents of those um, in an apparatus which allows you to do continuous extraction uh, doing liquid liquid equilibria. This concept of increasing the number of equilibria that you are doing is the fundamental basis of all chromatography. You've got to understand that the number of equilibria, as that increases, your separation of the two compounds increases. Separation in chromatography is based on an equilibrium event between two immiscible phases. And the larger the number of equilibria, the better the separation.